What's up you guys? Welcome back to the Average Joe on Money Financial Channel where we help the average Joe out there transform their lives through the power of investing. And in this video we're talking about <laughs> investing. But more specifically, we're talking about Vanguard. Woohoo! Even more specifically, we're talking about Vanguard's Sector Exchange Traded Funds, or Sector ETFs. In a previous video, I talked about the Vanguard index funds that are crushing the S&P 500, and I made a note that I wasn't including Sector ETFs. But in this video, I want to talk specifically about the Vanguard Sector Exchange Traded Funds that you could potentially look to buy, and the ones that you probably want to avoid. You guys know how much I hate long and drawn out BS videos, so without further delay, let's go ahead and jump onto my computer screen and let's take a look and drill down on these sector ETFs that you might want to buy and those that you probably want to avoid. Let's go. All right, guys, so we're talking Vanguard sector exchange traded funds. And the truth of the matter is when you buy a sector ETF, what you're saying is I believe in this specific segment of the economy more so than the others. Because if you believe in all the in the entire economy over an extended amount of time, then your best bet is to just buy the total stock market, VTI, or buy the S&P 500, VOO. However, if you believe specifically in, let's say, information technology, or energy, or consumer discretionary, or communication, or whatever sector you feel is going to do well in the future, well, then you can make a play on that specific sector of the economy. And the truth of the matter is, if we look at the actual details here, there are certain segments of the economy that I've just outperform the others by a wide margin. But we're gonna look at the ones that have outperformed, the ones that have really underperformed, and be able to explain to you and show you here on the screen exactly what you're buying when you buy a Vanguard sector ETF. So first thing we're gonna look at here are some sector ETFs that have absolutely outperformed uh, the overall market. First sector ETF we're gonna look at here is the Vanguard Communication Services ETF. Ticker symbol here is VOX, and that's a play on the communication service segment of the economy. And you would buy this ETF if you thought that this segment was going to do well when compared to the rest of the overall market. So when we look in here, you're gonna notice the expense ratio here. All of Vanguard's sector ETFs have the exact same expense ratio, which is 0.10%. We can see here down here on the price and yield that the market price as of December 4th uh, was $118.42. And if we scroll down even further, this is one of the things I wanna talk about. If you'd invested $10,000, 10 years ago back in 2010, you would now have just north of $25,000, which is a nice chunk of change when you consider you started with $10,000. A few quick things you wanna be aware of here with communication services. Um, there are 112 different stocks in this sector ETF and you have the month and 10 largest holdings. You've got major companies here, Google, uh, Facebook, Verizon, Netflix, Comcast, Disney, AT&T, and even if we drill down further, which you should drill down further because you really need to know what the weightings are on those top 10 holdings, you'll see here that Google holds 23.7% of the index um, that you're buying, the sector ETF, and Facebook owns 17. So just between two companies, you're at 40% of the sector ETF. And then when you factor in Verizon and Netflix, Comcast, Disney, all the top 10, you're talking about seven, just under 71% of the entire segment. You're almost better off buying the top 15 or 20 of the companies in this communication services ETF and just holding them outside of a sector ETF and avoid that expense ratio. This one is definitely very top heavy. Let's take a look at another one though. Another Vanguard sector ETF that is really performing well so far this year, but also over the past three and five and 10 years is the Vanguard Information Technology ETF. Ticker symbol here is VGT. This is one that I actually hold in my own uh, um, M1 Finance Roth IRA portfolio, which is made up of Vanguard exchange traded funds. I own uh, VGT. You can see here, if we scroll down, we can see that the market price as of December 4th, $341.60. And if you scroll down further, you can see hypothetically, look at this. I mean, you started with $10,000 back in um, back in 2010, you'd now have over $60,000, which is a major, major difference. If we go down here, we can see 330 different stocks in the, in the uh, sector ETF, and we've got 59% in the top 10 holdings. And again, we wanna drill down to the actual weightings here. That's important. If you look here, you can see that 21.5% is going to Apple, just under 17% is going to Microsoft. So almost 40% again into two companies. Very 
top heavy with the top 10 holdings here at 59%. Let's go back and take a look at the earnings here. If you click over here to price and performance, you'll see here that uh, on the one year return 43%, three year return 28%, five year return 26%, 10 year return 20% and then in the lifetime of the ETF uh, since 2004, we're at 12.87%. So again, the Vanguard information technology sector is a great sector if you feel that if you feel like that's the one that's going to outperform in the future. And there are certainly some big name players in there. Uh, but the question is whether or not you'd find the most benefit from buying the sector or just buying the individual stocks that make up most of that sector, or even better, just potentially to invest in just the S&P 500 or the total stock market. Like I said, this is one that I hold in my own Roth. IRA portfolio, and it's one I think, I, I believe that this sector is going to continue to outperform like it has in the past. Okay, third sector ETF here that you really want to take pay close attention to because it's really outperforming the overall market is the Vanguard Consumer Discretionary ETF. Ticker symbol here is VCR, and if you scroll down here, makes up companies in the consumer discretionary sector of the economy. We're talking, when we talk about consumer discretionary, it means that they, it's not a need or a want, like um, ex from an expense perspective, the companies that sell those products. Consumer discretionary is gonna be a little bit more, well, discretionary. When you have the money, you buy it. When you don't, you don't. And if we look here at the underlying companies in this sector ETF, we scroll down here, we see 290 um, different stocks in the sector ETF. We've got the top 10 holdings here. We want to make sure and we drill down to the holdings by weighting. We can see here Amazon holds just under 23% of the index. Um, and we've got Home Depot at 7%, Tesla at 5.7%, McDonald's at 4%, Nike at 37 Top 10 holdings that represent 53%. 0.90% of the assets. So not quite as top heavy as the other two. Uh, however, still very top heavy. Uh, you can make a case for buying just the top holdings in each of these sector ETFs and just holding those as individual stocks. But if you believe that the consumer discretionary sector of the economy is going to outperform in the future, then this is a great way to invest in that specific segment of the economy. You can see here the actual price for this sector ETF is $265.51. And if we scroll down here, we can see the historical price performance. We're at 45% uh, for the one year return, 21% for the three year, five year is 17.5% and 10 year 17.88%. Lifetime since 04 is 11.69%. So we've talked about the pros and cons of sector ETFs and when owning them and, and the risk of potentially not having diversification across other sectors of the economy. But the truth is one of the biggest things that you have to watch out for with the segment of the economy doing well or bad is, well, it could do really, really bad or due to just you know, the current economic cycle that, or due to exit circumstances such as, I don't know, COVID-19, where you've got companies that are just, they can't perform because this segment of the economy has reduced demand. Case in point here, if we look and we um, take a look at the segment ETF that's just really, really struggling year to date, but also historically, um, based on a lot on the performance this year, is the Vanguard Energy ETF. Ticker symbol here is VDE. Victor David Edward. And like I said, it focuses on the energy sector of the economy. Current market price, $55.10 as of uh, so December 4th. If you had invested $10,000 back in 2010, guess how much money you'd have? Like $7,000? I mean, that's less. That's really bad. And if you uh, look down here, we scroll down, we've got 115 different stocks in the uh, segment of the economy. We've got 70.3% of the total assets in the top 10 holdings. And we gotta go, we gotta look at that breakdown by waiting here. And we've got Exxon at 21%, Chevron at 21%. We're talking about 43% just about already. Um, and then we got ConocoPhillips, Kinder Morgan here uh, making up another, uh, making other small portions of the segment of the economy. But again, top 10 holdings, 70.3% here. The risk that you carry by investing in specific segments of the economy as opposed to the whole economy is that you run a risk of that segment really struggling and performing poorly. So if we take a step back here from the actual numbers and we talk about, well, what is my risk profile? What do I want the money for? What do I need the money? And you're talking about long-term investments, then a sector ETF may not be the best fit for you. That being said, if you'd like to take a portion of your portfolio, utilize you know, the S&P 500 VOO or the total market uh, VTI, and you wanna take a portion of those investments and put it into a sector ETF, you can certainly do that. You can even put it towards those top three sectors of the economy that are outperforming the rest of the market. It all comes down to what do 
able to accomplish, how okay are you with risk in your portfolio? If you haven't done it, hit that subscribe button below and click the notification bell if you're the average Joe investor out there that wants to transform their lives through the power of investing. That's what we're all about here on this Average Joe and Money Financial channel. That's all I got for you guys. Have a great rest of your day and please, during this pandemic, continue to stay healthy both physically and financially. Have a good one.